Hello everyone, finally talking because I know you guys like it when I talk. Now, first things first, sorry if I say this name wrong. Thank you to Huyon for sponsoring this video. But um, anyway, this sketch portion is going to be very short because the white balance is all whack in this clip. But yeah, but going straight into the review, I'm going to talk about the cons that I found out while using this tablet. So when I started drawing on it, it actually felt pretty fine at first, but eventually I did have to go into the drivers and change the pressure sensitivity. It was fine, it wasn't anything drastically bad, but I did end up trying the presets that they have in their drivers, and the soft preset just felt better to me than the default one. Another thing, probably one of the biggest drawbacks that I think this tablet has is the tilt. So this pen has an upward tilt. And I just naturally tilt my pen upward when I draw. It's just the way I hold my pen. So it would like trigger the tilt settings of the brush that I was using and make my lines thicker. Naturally, when I draw, I like to tilt my pen downwards when I want it to tilt. You can probably see it in this clip, but I was trying it out and it just like wasn't working the way I wanted it to. And unfortunately, you can't turn off the tilt settings in the drivers. And so if this is something that is going to bother you, just like me, you're going to have to go into the individual brush settings itself and turn off the tilt settings. So that's probably one of the biggest drawbacks about this tablet. Another drawback is that the screen heats up. After I finished sketching this drawing, I actually went to Walmart and I just left the tablet on that entire time. It was maybe like two or three hours and the upper right corner was very hot. And so because this heats up a lot, I can't use it as a second monitor, which is a shame because I'm a two monitor Andy and I can't be anymore. <laughs> and the thing is, I actually ended up really liking this tablet to the point where I think I might switch to it for a few months and see how it works for me. I'm gonna be betraying my 15.6 for now and here are the good reasons as to why I'm actually switching over to this one. First thing I'm gonna mention is actually unrelated to the tablet itself, but it's something that surprised me and what I received was the tablet stand. So I tried to look it up to see if the tablet stand comes with the purchase and I didn't really get a straight answer. Um, I don't know if it was just given to me because it was a sponsor or if it's actually within the bundle of the, um, the tablet itself, but tablet stand is really nice. Like, I like it better than the one I bought from Amazon, which you can see back in the beginning of the video because it's very stable. It is small though, so I don't know how it would hold up um, for like bigger tablets that are larger than 13 inches. Speaking of the actual positive things about the tablet, it has a really nice design. It's very like compact and sleek, very flat surface. To be honest, I like its design better than the XP Pen uh, 15.6. And the 15.6 is a bit of an older model, so understandably, this one is gonna look better. For the Express Keys, I didn't torture myself this time. I didn't force myself to use them, so I can't really say anything about them. The only thing that I can really mention about them is that they were very easy to set up because I did still go into the drivers and set the express keys who I wanted them to be just in case I changed my mind and I wanted to try them out. Another really impressive thing is that this has a pen tablet mode. You can see it uh, early on just before I talk around the three minute mark where if you just plug the tablet in but you don't turn the screen on you can use it as a pen tablet. And it's honestly really useful because it saves energy and sometimes you kind of just feel like sitting back and drawing via pen tablet instead of screen. And I think I'm gonna be utilizing that a lot. I've already utilized it actually for drawing stickers. Like a few days ago, I saw that I needed to do a few minor adjustments to one of my sticker designs. And I didn't wanna bring out this tablet turn it on, uh, switch my canvas to that monitor, make sure it's calibrated and all that stuff. And I just like plugged it in, didn't even use the tablet stand, started drawing on it and I fixed 
the adjustments that I needed and it was really quick. And I was like, this is really convenient. One of the other things too is I actually like the smaller size. So normally I use a 15.6 screen tablet and it's annoying to like move it and stuff because it's big. And this is a 13 inch and it actually makes my workspace a lot easier to work in and it gives me more free space. And so I actually like the fact that this is smaller than what I'm used to. It's not too small either. It's still a big enough screen for me to be able to move my arm the way I want it. And so because of these reasons, I will be switching to the Canvas 13 instead of my 15.6 XP Pen tablet. Sorry, XP Pen. I mean, I might go back to it later, but we'll see how this tablet holds up. You're going to be seeing it in my videos from now on. Overall, I'd probably rate this an 8 out of 10. I'm docking two stars because of the major drawbacks like the tilt and the heat problems. Because I was actually really looking forward to using this as a second monitor and now I can't because it's just going to heat up if I keep it on all day. Yeah, that's it for my review. If you're looking to buy this tablet, they actually have a sale right now. So it's like a pretty perfect time to go and grab it if you want it. That's the end of the review section. From now on, I'm going to be talking about what I'm drawing like a normal draw with me. Okay, now that the review is over, let's just chat. I wonder if any of you noticed that I just like ate a snicker in the middle of drawing. I mentioned before that I went to Walmart and you best bet that the first thing I did was get chocolate because the Halloween sales. I mean, what are you guys gonna do for Halloween? Because I am literally just gonna stay home. Well, actually, in the first half of the day, I'm going to be going to class and I'm going to be presenting my 3D art, which is just an inflatable sculpture. But um, other than that, we are actually going to have a potluck in my class. And I'm going to get to like eat pizza and candy and I'm not going to lie, I'm excited because it's been a while since I've been to like um, a campus like Halloween party. I'm not usually a party person, but like you guys like remember those Halloween parties that you would have in elementary school where everyone would like bring goodie bags and like the teachers would bring candy. I just miss that. And so it's pretty exciting potluck. You know, it's been a while since COVID that I've been in a on-campus class and it's just like, it's, it's a very exciting thing to happen to me right now. Gosh, I was so weirdly excited about Halloween party, but yeah, I'm not really gonna dress up either because that's just not the type of person that I am. But anyway, let's talk Draculaura. So I knew for Halloween that I wanted to draw some sort of like spooky fan art and I was torn between Draculaura or Frankie from Monster High. And honestly, to be honest, I like Frankie better, but she just doesn't match my style the way that Draculaura does. So I chose Draculaura because she has the bright pinks that, you know, could be fun to work with. And it was fun to work with. Initially when I was sketching, I gave her her normal um, low pigtails, but then I didn't like how it looked with the composition that I chose, so I gave her high pigtails instead. And this was one of those moments where I just like didn't really have a pose in mind. I kind of just posed in my mirror and I just chose it. I actually struggled with the hand a bit and you probably saw it earlier, but you could literally see me um, put my hands up on the screen and just like copy them. And I also think it's just, I always like to include my nails in this video and some people have commented about it, but I think it's kind of funny how every video, I do my nails for these videos, but then they don't even last the entire video because I work on these drawings for like multiple days and this time around I was trying out a new method on gel x nails and they just kept popping off and so like three of them had popped off by the time that I got to coloring this and I was just like oh you know what like screw it let me just take all of them off so now I have no nails like I started this video with full hand of nails and now I have no nails. 
Some people have like mentioned I should do a video on me doing my nails, but trust me, you don't want to see that. I'm very bad at doing it. It takes me a long time and it's not like, it's not a, a neat thing to see. I'm very messy when I do my nails. I mess up a lot. But I, you just know that I had to give Draculaura some nails also. I was thinking like um, a red nail with black gradient. But I guess it doesn't really look red here. This kind of looks like a combination of like hot pink and black. Or like a really dark hot pink. She was honestly really fun to draw. At this point, while I was drawing this, it had been kind of a while since the last time I drew an actual character. Uh, my last draw was me with Isabella. That was the last time that I drew like a full-on character because for the last couple of weeks, my life has been consumed by my sticker shop and I've just been drawing stickers and I was kind of neglecting like uh, my normal drawing subjects, basically. And I'm just going to talk about the sticker shop because I don't know what else to talk about. So the shop launch was a success. We got around like 30 orders on the first day and it's just been slowing down lately, um, which is honestly a lot more than what I was expecting with the shop launch. At the moment, we haven't gotten orders in like the last couple of days, but whatever, you know, I still earned some money from it um, and I'm really looking forward to making more stickers. And the thing that was pretty unexpected was that my character stickers, like Sydney, Jules, and Zabella, they were the most popular and also um, my sticker sheet of my characters, which is weird because when I first got them manufactured and I put them up for sale, um, Maybe it was the fact that they were $10 instead of $7, but it was really hard to sell. Like, not a lot of people were buying them. But this time around, I've almost sold out. I only have three left of those um, besties character sticker sheets. And I'm just like so happy that people like my characters. I remember in the uh, giveaway comments, I didn't even mention their names at all, but people just already knew them by name. And it's just like, it was like, it was like making me blush, honestly. It's one of my dreams for people to kind of become invested into these characters that I've created and designed. And to know that people just know them by name, even though I myself feel like I haven't really given them that much attention for people to know them by name. It's like a dream come true. I'm just like, wow, like I made it. Like people know my characters and I should really just start the webtoon on them so that you guys can know them better. But I'm excited to make more stickers of them too. And honestly, I've been really enjoying making the studio vlogs. I know that they don't get that many views because with my YouTube channel, I've built up an audience that really likes Draw With Me's. And I don't know why it's taken me so long to think of this idea, but I draw for stickers. Why not do a Draw With Me sticker edition? Like literally, it's right there. And I don't know why. I just didn't do that until now. And, um, and earlier this day that I'm editing this video, I actually recorded drawing some stickers. I drew for like a couple of hours and then I found out that it only recorded like maybe an hour of footage and I was so disappointed guys. It's so annoying. So I used my phone to record and my phone had ran out of storage at one point and it stopped recording and I was like screaming like, Ugh, like it was just losing footage is devastating honestly because there was a lot of moments in there where i wanted you guys to see that i wasn't in my comfort zone like i don't normally draw cutesy stuff and objects and i'm just used to drawing characters and i'm trying to create these like cute mascots for my shop that are still true to my style and i was really struggling with like figuring out what i like to draw 
but for now we just have Doompy and Ken. You'll see them later on. You guys know Doompy already, he's a frog. Um, Ken, I have a short up teasing Ken. He's basically a, a chick, a baby chick, who's just mad all the time. Honestly, he's so cute. But yeah, my two sons at the moment. But I want to make more characters for my shop. And it's really exciting. I mean, these studio vlogs, they're kind of just a bit more relaxing to make than draw with me's because it's just me going about doing what I normally do in my day and just filming it. And, you know, I'm still going to do it even though it doesn't get that many views because it's something that I myself enjoy doing. I just kind of hope that eventually it does get more views and that I start to also get an audience who likes to watch studio vlogs other than just draw with me's. And as a creator, it's important to me to just do what I enjoy instead of what brings in the views. I mean, it's easier said than done because it is pretty easy to get caught up in the views and just do what you know does well. But if I did that for the entirety of like my YouTube career, I will go insane. Like I just know it. So I'm just going to keep doing my silly little studio vlogs and Hopefully, you guys end up liking them. Who knows? Um, I have some plans in the future about a Percy Jackson fan art sheet. I've drawn some busts of the males of the Percy Jackson series, Heroes of Olympus and all that. And I want to do a video of that and I want to turn them into stickers. I also have a chibi of Rachel Elizabeth Dare, one of my favorite characters in the series. And I want to turn that into a sticker too. So like, you know, my sticker shop is also just going to include my typical art of like chibis, uh, fan art and all that stuff. It's not just going to be like cute stuff. But honestly, my main goal with the shop is to create a kid core vibe. It's a bit hard and I'll talk about and I'll talk more about that um, when I do the, the sticker draw with me. And hopefully you guys will be interested in that because it is a draw with me. I'm also more likely to talk in it more and you're you're gonna see me struggle and I feel like that's something that people like to see is me struggling and I do indeed struggle a lot. But um yeah I've just been rambling and rambling on way too much in this video. I don't even know what I talked about anymore but yeah once again, thank you Huion for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching it and enjoying my content. Uh, here's a reminder that I do have a Patreon and I just created a gift bag tier for $10. You'll receive a gift bag from stuff from my shop that is supposed to be valued at at least $10. And you'll receive that every time you're charged for like whatever month that you sign up for. And yeah, that's it for now. See you next time and goodbye.